You can practice the drums in an apartment without bothering your neighbors. Regardless of what people tell you, yes, it can be done. You can do this as long as you practice the smart way. And that's what I'm sharing with you today. I'll share with you exactly what I learned being a gigging drummer in an apartment for over two years. Here we go. Hey, welcome to the non-glamorous drummer. I believe that no matter who you are, you can conquer the drums when you have the right know-how. And I believe this video is gonna help you with just that. So if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and also download my free practicing e-guide all about how to know what to practice. If you've ever not known what to practice and felt lost in your practicing, grab this free guide. It's gonna help direct you and help you be more productive and get more done in less time. It's called the three-part daily practice routine. Totally free, check it out. Now my goal today is twofold. I wanna give you all of my best apartment drumming practical, very doable action tips that you can implement now, or at least very soon. And then I also wanna share with you my favorite gear, my favorite quiet practice gear that really revolutionized my practicing and made all this a lot easier if you're able to invest a little bit of money into it. So seven tips and then my favorite gear, here we go. Number one, know what you need to practice. I call this the diagnose and prescribe sequence where you've gotta be able to diagnose whatever the biggest issue is going on in your playing right now and prescribe a solution for it. Prescribe a practice solution, something you can practice doing to fix that one thing. So that might be as simple as left hand grip. Maybe left hand is a little sloppy, a little bit stiff. It needs to look more like your right hand if that's your dominant hand. So maybe that's your one thing. That's the thing you've diagnosed, you're gonna practice that. The reason why this is the first thing I'm saying is because you have limited time to practice. When you have to practice quietly, when you're in an apartment, you have limited time. You generally can't just practice all day, even if you had the time to practice all day. Your time is limited. This is gonna lead into our next two tips that are really good productivity tips you might have heard of if you've been in that realm or if you've been in business. Tip number two, apply the 80-20 principle to your practice sessions. 80-20 states that 80% of the results come from just 20% of the effort or vice versa, 20% of the results come from 80% of the effort. And so what that means is that most of the time, only 20% of your practicing is actually generating all of the results. And so by doing that first tip, by diagnosing specific problems and working to solve them, you're doing that, you're whittling things down, you're finding the 20% that's actually getting you results. That's what you wanna do. Now tip number three, moving on to another productivity rule. This is a really simple one that's easy to follow and it always helps. Apply Parkinson's law to your practice sessions. Parkinson's law states that work will expand to fill the time given for its completion. So if you think about just the classic a school example where you're in college and you've got a paper due next week, well, you're probably not gonna get it done for another week, right? Unless you're just super on top of it and you do it right now. But let's say you forgot that the paper was due in two hours, so you've got two hours to get it done. Well, you're gonna get it done. You're gonna make sure you get that paper done because that's a big part of your grade, so you better get it done. Same thing applies to your practicing where if you give yourself a tighter but still reasonable timeline, deadline for your practicing, you're gonna be more productive. If you give yourself two hours to practice, You'll get some great stuff done. You'll also have a lot of fun. You'll play some songs. It'll, it'll be fun and everything, but you might need to condense things less than that because it might be wise to make noise for a smaller amount of time, a narrower window. So let's say you only give yourself 30 minutes. Well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna prioritize those most important things, that top 20% of things that actually generate the results. You're gonna work on your grip. You're gonna target that coordination issue. And so you're gonna make a lot of progress just in that 30 minutes. So give yourself a tight deadline, whatever that is, whatever is reasonable and makes sense for you, and you'll make sure that you get things done in that amount of time, you'll be more productive as a result. Tip number four, spend more time listening to music than actually playing along to it or actually practicing your drums. Now, I, I kinda have to throw in some disclaimers. Depending on where you're at and you're playing, you may still need to log significant time on your kit. So I don't say this to say don't practice, do practice, but however much time you're spending practicing, spend more time actually listening to music. Spend more time working your ear, building that musicality, and just gaining, you know, putting into your, your musical mind great ideas from great music. Be doing a lot of that. So those first four tips were specifically about practice time and being more efficient, saving time, but none of that is any good if your neighbors are complaining and calling the cops on you and banging on your door all the time. So. These next three tips regard how to make sure you don't get complaints from your neighbors, how to keep things quiet and, and avoid all of that drama that none of us want to face. Tip number five. This is kind of obvious, but I know it's hard to do and I want to help you with it. Only practice during the day. So if you're fortunate enough to be able to only practice during the day, like midday between 11 a.m. and 2 or 3 p.m., 
then do that because that's when most of your neighbors are not at home. Now, I know right now I'm, I'm making this video while we're still kind of in the midst of COVID stuff, and so more people are working from home. So that very well could be different from the way it was when I was in an apartment where my neighbors were gone middle of the day. And I was fortunate enough to be able to practice during the day because I was usually leaving and teaching lessons, playing gigs later in the day. But let's say you do have a full-time job. Let's say you've got a day job. You've, you, you don't have the luxury of practicing at home middle of the day. What I would recommend doing is playing just on your pad a little bit before work or right after work at, at a point in the day where it can fit in with a regular schedule, where you can actually make a habit of doing it. And then on the weekends, midday Saturday, midday Sunday, then actually play on your kit. Now, if you are fortunate enough to be working from home through COVID, and maybe this could be an ongoing thing where you can continue working from home, then you might be able to just set up a practice pad at your desk and take quick breaks from work and just play a little bit or during your lunch break, go play on your kit. And so through COVID, it's funny how many people have had more time to practice as a result. And so I hope that you're in a situation like that where you do have more time freedom, more flexibility so that you can actually get in some extra practice in the daytime. So this leads into tip number six, which is have a quiet practice setup in place. Whether that's just your practice pad next to your desk when you're working, if you're working from home, so you can reach over and play a little bit, but have a quiet practice setup ready to go. Just have a reliable way to muffle down your kit. I'm gonna share with you the exact gear that I used to do that that really helped me a lot. Um, but the big thing that I wanna share with you right now that you don't wanna neglect if, if you're trying to practice in an apartment or even if you're playing on an e-kit in an apartment, have an isolation platform to isolate your kit from the floor. Make sure you're able to have your kit separated from the floor, like something in between your bass drum and the floor. Because what happens is even if you have your kit muffled down, the thumping of the pedal, the smacking of the sticks on the drums, those vibrations travel through stands, through the carpet, into the joists, and those vibrations travel all throughout your building. And so it's those direct vibrations that are pounding into the structure of the building, that's what everybody hears. So if you take the time to isolate your kit from the floor, that's actually gonna help a lot because much less thumping will leave the room that your drums are in. And your neighbors down below, you won't hear as much sound either. I built a tennis ball riser in 2017. You can check out my video I made about that several years ago. Um, my strategy was to make a portable tennis ball riser involving no tools other than a drill. So I kind of took a unique approach to making it. And so you can check that out if you're in a similar scenario and you wanna be able to build something in your apartment, you don't have access to space and tools and everything, you can't be sawing wood, this is a great way to do it. So check out that video. In that video, I tested the effectiveness of the tennis ball riser by taking it to a family member's house and listening from the floor below to how much sound was actually bleeding through. And there was a very distinct difference. It's pretty interesting. So go check that video out if you haven't seen it. Okay, tip number seven. This is kind of a painful one and it's, one of, it's, it's a very duh, obvious kind of tip, but it's also hard to follow. It's a little bit of a challenge to deal with. And that's don't play hard when you practice. If you're gonna practice effectively in an apartment without bothering your neighbors, you can't just go crazy playing loud. You can't do it, you can't play loud. You have to practice more quietly. And so you have to really take the opportunity to focus on your quiet chops, focus on you know, staying loose, relaxed, and not rushing when you're playing more quietly. That's often a challenge a lot of us face where we tend to rush when we play more lightly. Take the opportunity to work on your quiet playing, to work on your grip and just work on your precision with everything, your precision, really listening to yourself even if you're not playing super hard. So I say that, but I know it can be frustrating when you've got loud playing gigs. I did too, like there were gigs where I needed to play loud and I wasn't able to practice the way I was gonna perform. Ideally, we wanna practice the way we're gonna perform, but sometimes it's just not possible. So what I would do is I would put towels over my practice pad and I would just like practice sticking stuff out, going really fast with singles, just to keep my wrist strong, build up the forearm strength. I would practice doubles on a pillow. I would do the same thing with my feet where I would drape towels over my practice system on my kick drum just to keep my feet strong and make sure I wasn't getting worn out on gigs. That really was an important part of my practicing and you might wanna do that too. But what's ideal is if you can have a dedicated practice space somewhere where you can make noise. Maybe it's at a friend's house, a relative's house, maybe it's at a, a studio space or a practice space. Maybe it's at your church, that's what I did. Uh, anywhere you can take your drums or have a drum set set up where you can go and play loudly every so often, like every few days, every few weeks, whatever works for you. Okay, so that is it for the seven tips. Now I wanna share with you my favorite gear and how I used some of this gear as well as a couple of tricks for um, really maximizing some of these things. Um, these, these pieces of quiet practice gear really did revolutionize the way I was practicing in an apartment because it made it less frustrating. So if you're able to invest just a few hundred bucks, if you're doing this a lot and maybe you're playing gigs and you need to prepare for them, or you're just doing this purely for a hobby, you're gonna have more fun playing quietly if you do have good gear to help support that. 
So first thing, Aquarian Super Pads. I was a really a big fan of these. I still use these all the time. What they are is just normal rubber practice pads, kind of a spongy feel. They're not super bouncy. They don't feel like drum heads, but what you do is you place them on your drums, just snap them into place. They come on and off easily, so they're very convenient. Um, they don't feel just like drum heads, but they're quiet. And honestly, they were so simple and easy to use for me that they were great. And I still use these all the time. I actually, a lot of times I'll set up a little practice kit here in the studio too, next to this one so I can play quietly and I'll use the super pads for that. You can get them in all different sizes. So you can just snap them into place on your drums. Uh, there's also a big one that goes onto the kick drum. And so you can very quickly outfit your kit with these in just a matter of seconds. Now, my probably ultimate favorite thing, Zildjian L80 low volume cymbals. Now there's also uh, some competing cymbals that Sabian's made, and I think there's some other ones out there too. I think these were the first, and a few years ago, this was all that I found, all that was available. So now you've got some more options, but get some low volume cymbals. The Zildjian L80s are great. They're, it's just incredible how you can smack it really hard and you can still talk over it. I mean, I can sit here going like this, and you can still hear me talking. They're super bright, you know, high frequency, very articulate, very staccato but they're not incredibly loud. So extremely helpful tool because you can accurately practice cymbal playing, accurately practice hi-hat playing, that's big. Accurately practice hi-hat playing quietly in your apartment. That was a huge deal for me, so get those. Now I did decide to make an upgrade, which actually money-wise, financially is not an upgrade because Remo silent strokes are cheaper, but I decided to get some Remo silent stroke mesh heads for the toms on my kit instead of the super pads just because I wanted a better feel. These actually feel really good. They cost about the same as normal drum heads too, and so they are the most cost-effective option for most folks. It's just that you have to switch out your drum heads, and if you have the same kit that you're practicing on, that you're taking on gigs, then that can get a little bit tiresome having to do that. But if you have these on your toms, you tune them just finger tight and put a couple of strips of gaff tape in the middle, they actually feel really good. And you can tune your resonant heads on your toms just right to get a nice low kind of humming tone. And so you can convince yourself you're hitting an actual tom just with the volume down. And so that's a really cool option. That's what I ended up doing on my toms in my practice kit. But I will say the ultimate favorite piece of practice gear and also the most expensive is the R-Tom black hole. This thing's really cool because it's the best of both worlds. You get the mesh accurate feel of the Remo silent strokes, but you get the ease of use of the super pass where you can just put these on and off your drums they just snap into place around the lugs, really cool. Take them on and off. They also have the built-in rubber hoop, so you can play quiet rim shots. This is the only practice system out there that allows you to play quiet rim shots. It has this patch in the middle that functions the same way that gaff tape would in the middle of the Remo silent strokes. That helps get rid of that springiness that mesh heads tend to have so that it feels more accurate. So these are expensive. It's like 60 bucks, 60, 70, 80 bucks, depending on the size. They make them for kick drum too. I just bought one. I put this on my snare drum so I could play rim shots. I did the Remo silent strokes on the toms and the Aquarian super pad on the kick. That was generally my, my go-to setup and that was the final setup I landed on before moving into a house. So check out all those products. The links are in the description. You can check them out for yourself and check out my some of my older videos where I do do comparisons of these so that you can hear them back to back and check these out. I go into a lot more detail about them instead of just a quick show and tell. So go check those out if you are an apartment drummer and you're able to spend a little bit of money and make some really wise gear investments to make your practicing more effective and more productive. I certainly hope this video helped you out. I hope this shed some light on a challenging situation because if you are a drummer in an apartment, I do not envy you. I went through it for two and a half years and it was tough, it was hard. I had to overcome a lot of problems that you're having to figure out right now for yourself. So I hope this helped to guide you. I hope some of my other videos on apartment drumming help you out too because I want you to still grow as a drummer. I want you to accomplish your drumming goals, accomplish your drumming dreams of playing well with a band and being musical and being solid and comfortable behind the kit even while living in an apartment. And along those lines of practicing, grab my free practicing e-guide in the description, breaking down the specific things you can practice every day to make steady progress on the drums. It's called the three-part daily practice routine, and it's gonna really help you focus your practice, narrow in, and really make progress in a lot less time. It's definitely gonna help you out, so check that out before you go. Hey, thanks for watching everyone. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to watch some of my other videos. Know that when you put your mind to this stuff, you can do it. You can become the drummer you want to be. You can do it. Stay non-glamorous. Take care. I'll see you on the next video.